we're going to go now on to the, the next section. <clears throat> so we've talked about the intro to the AI landscape and, and what kind of the tools and the trademarks and the and the different ways in which Microsoft is implementing this across their suite of business software. Now we're going to go into the question that all of us are wondering, which is, okay, great. So you have this set of tools, you have a toolbox with fancy names like Azure and ChatGPT, but what does this actually mean for business? So how can you utilize AI in your business, regardless of how large you are, to enhance your business processes and grow and make uh, more money? Awesome. Let me go ahead and um, I'm going to use a slide um, to help set up this um, conversation. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's a great question. And that's obviously the biggest, um, you know, reason why, you know, we want to uh, bring these technologies to you. So I'm going to start with this slide that talks about the patterns that we are seeing across the different customer segments that I've been working with and our team has been working with for the past year and a half or so with these models. So there are four groups of capabilities that are evolving as uh, use cases that our customers are utilizing this technology for in their businesses. So I'll start from the far left here, which is content generation. While content generation sounds very generic, that's what chat GPT models do. How is that useful in a business? So one example that we have on the slide is call center analytics. So let's say you have a call center or you have you know customers calling in. It doesn't even have to be an enterprise call center. It can be just customers calling in. And you are, as a customer service agent, responding to those calls. It'll be great if we can actually take all of the transcripts of the calls that are coming in and the AI automatically generate responses back for the agent so that he or she can then use that in their response as a draft, as a co-pilot, right? Um, and the idea here is that the AI model is intelligent enough to know maybe previous call patterns that has happened for the same customer, or it could also look up other information, like maybe new promotions that are going on based on some of the keywords that you know the customer is telling you. And all of that is very hard for the call agent to instantly like understand and respond to. But by having the model sort of go and look at all of this information and automatically generate the next set of responses is a way that they could, you know, enable and do call agent coaching uh, in, in, in that enterprise context. So content generation in uh, general, but content generation could mean a lot of things. You can generate emails for your marketing campaigns. I work with a lot of healthcare customers. And so one of the things that, you know, they uh, struggle with is, how do I, you know, do uh, like when patient emails are coming in and the doctors are flooded with those patient emails, maybe use this tool to automatically generate certain responses. But again, as a first draft where the doctors can then review them and then maybe add the missing information or edit it and send it back. So content generation has a lot of different use cases. So that's one uh, area where we are seeing this technology being used in businesses. The second one, um, and I'm going from left to right here on the slide is summarization of content. Again, there is so much data out there. And you know, to be able to generate quick summaries is a great use case for these large language models. So let's think about financial reporting or analyst articles that are coming in and you are trying to maybe you're a small firm, uh, a financial advisory firm, and you want to provide that uh, you know, information back to your uh, customer. And you can do quick summaries of these financial reporting documents. Again, in the healthcare context, patient discharge summaries, uh, doctors hate doing that apparently is what we are finding, is what we found out when we interviewed a few of them. And it's, it's an administrative burden for them that they don't want to spend time doing. They want to spend time in front of the patients. So being able to like summarize, uh, quickly create patient discharge summaries, again, and the doctor reviews it and uh, uses that information um, to send it to the patient would be an example. Going back to the call center analytics, you can quickly summarize conversation logs from past conversations, or just think about any set of articles, journals that you have. You want to get summaries of them so that you can make some decision based on that. That's the second use case. The third one is very interesting, which is code generation, which we talked about, right? Being able to generate SQL code, programming language code, et cetera. 
And uh, Dan mentioned the Excel example where I can come in and I can create these pivot tables. But what's really happening behind the scenes is it's generating some code. So you can, as a business user now, come in and let's say I dynamically want to create my reporting. So maybe I want to know which customers churned in the last three months that were in a certain region in Miami or in Texas. But to do that, you're normally creating reports ahead of time or you're you know, using some tool like uh, some of the BI tools out there. But what if I can just state that in English? I can say, hey, please show me all the customers that churned in the last three months in Miami. And now the model turns that into SQL code or whatever other programming language code goes and hits your data store that has that information, your customer CRM system, and then brings back that information that you can present dynamically in a report to the end user. So that's a great use case for code generation. Documenting code in general, I don't know if you all have IT organizations where you have legacy code and those programmers are not there anymore. You can use this to document what was done so that you can either migrate it to a newer, uh, modernized uh, version of that code base, or you can you know, at least use it for understanding what those applications were doing in the past. So developer productivity, uh, et cetera, is a use case when we think about code generation. The last one, the very last one is semantic search. Semantic search is think about information mining or knowledge mining of any kind. A lot of customers have some basic search applications. So you may have a website where people can come in and search for information uh, to find content. But what if you can make that search very human-like, very conversational, exactly like what ChatGPT does in the public application, but doing it on your data set? So that's what semantic search is all about, is to be able to have this chatbot um, that is very human-like, where people can come in and ask all sorts of questions, uh, but then it goes and finds it within your enterprise context and answers it back for you. So semantic search you know, is, is one of the use cases that we're starting to see. Now, one of the things I did as part of this uh, meeting and as part of preparing for this meeting is, I know we have a lot of small businesses here, and uh, I wanted to know, I mean, a lot of these are applicable no matter what the size of the business is. It doesn't have to be a large enterprise because like I said, the cost of using these models are ridiculously low. Experimentation, even to try what these things can do for you, is, it's, it's extremely low that you, know, you can fast fail if you want, right? You can quickly try it and if it doesn't really do what it's supposed to do, you can move on and try the next thing. But I specifically wanted to know how can this be applied or any of these use cases be applied in small business context? And I was like, okay, let me go and maybe ask some of the people that may have worked closely with small businesses, or let me go and do a Google search or a Bing search. But I said, well, let me ask ChatGPT. What does it think about using these models for small businesses? So here is an actual copy paste of me asking the GPT-4 model, which is the latest model, right, that we have within Azure, on what use cases can I use GPT models for to help small and medium businesses? And it came up with, you know, 10 things. Um, and if you think, if you look at these 10 things, and we're not going to drain all of this information here, but it's very similar to those four capabilities that I talked about, right? So let's just talk about customer support. So even if you don't have a dedicated customer support team, you can really create chatbots and have automated email responses generated for questions that your customers are asking via email or whatever forum they use it for. How about using this for generating product descriptions as you're creating your uh, e-commerce websites, et cetera, where you can have engaging product descriptions by letting the model create those for you and then you analyze and uh, uh, you know, mod modify them. And I'm just randomly picking some of these use cases, right? Training materials, the very last one. Well, if you're in the business of education and uh, training and uh, teaching like we have here with the BizHack Academy, you can use a lot of this models to create like content that is tailored to a certain audience, create FAQs for uh, you know, customers and so on and so forth. You, know, you can read through this list, we will share these slides with you, but those four capabilities that I talked about are very much applicable if you are a small business as well. So I'm gonna pause there, Dan, and see if this makes sense so far, any questions on this? Yeah, absolutely. And um, we're not going to share the slides, but we'll definitely share uh, some of the summary of the most important points. I did want to invite Nicole Donnelly, uh, one of my co-instructors, uh, to ask a question, please. Well, I understand that this is available. One of the big questions that keeps getting repeated here is how much does it cost? How much does it cost to use 
Azure and um, the Microsoft suite of tools, because, you know, with that capability built in, then you're not cobbling together all of the different AI tools, or else you could have a big tech stack of all these mini functions. Um, so that's been a repeated question on here. Yeah, it's a great question. And um, so let's talk about costs specifically for these chat GPT models, right? So that's number one. And I think the question is bigger than that. There are other AI services and how does the cost factor in in general? So for the chat GPT models, um, the cost that we have in a lot of these Azure AI services, these cloud-based services, the cost model is in general usage-based. So depending on how much content you're analyzing and sending to these models to analyze, that's sort of like the parameter that we use to calculate the pricing. So in the case of chat GPT models, the questions that you're sending to the model and the responses that you're getting back, so the amount of characters that you're sending, that's roughly what we would use to sort of tell you how much you're going to be paying for you know, uh, processing that information. And when I said the cost of doing this is ridiculously low, um, and without getting into specifics, so for example, for the GPT model, the chat GPT model, it's 0 0.002 cents per thousand tokens that you send to the model. And tokens is basically about four characters. So anyway, so even if you're sending tons and tons of information, let's say you're sending hundreds and thousands of documents and sending to the model and getting answers back, it is so low. Maybe you're spending a couple of hundred dollars a month to use this chat GPT type functionality. That's why this is exciting. We have democratized it so, uh, so much that not just it's easy to access these models and take advantage of this capability, but also in a very low cost manner. Now that's specifically for chat GPT. And you're absolutely right. When we think about use cases or building an end product, you will probably use some of our other AI models as well. Like I mentioned earlier, you may use our OCR model to first scan and um, take all of the text from images and then use a chat GPT model to answer questions about that text. So now we're using another model called the OCR model here in this example. And so there's a cost for the OCR model. And again, it's based on how much images or how many uh, files you're sending. So it's not easy to just say, here is a cost, but it's usage based. And, um, and then that is where when you design an application, depending on which components that you're going to be using, um, you know, those pricing and that information is available on our um, pricing pages. And it's uh, not that hard to calculate, but you have to have a little bit of understanding of how much content, how much data that you're going to be sending to these models to get an accurate response. But the chat GPT models, which is the primary focus that we are talking about here today, are relatively inexpensive to try out and uh, use in your um, applications. And what about Azure, since that's what you've been talking about? Um, what's the entry for that? So everything that I'm talking about is Azure uh, ChatGPT. So, right. Uh, and so there is not like really a cost itself for getting an Azure. So just to get started on Azure, to use our Azure cloud, there is really no like cost. It's all usage based again. When you okay. start spinning up services within Azure, like ChatGPT, so there is uh, an Azure. So when, when you, if you've never used Azure before, you have to go and create an, what we call an Azure subscription account. When you create an Azure subscription account, there is no cost. You pay nothing. You pay zero dollars. You you usually put in a credit card, or if you're an enterprise, you can have a agreement with us where you know you're prepaying for a set of uh, compute uh, capability, etc. But there's no cost. The moment you start using and you know creating and deploying the services is when you start paying, right? So there's no cost to entry, and then the AI models that we talked about will all be based on the usage. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Perfect. Well, let's move on to the next um, uh, section, just to make sure that we have time to cover everything with the time we have remaining. Um, and guys, keep the questions coming. We have uh, more than uh, nearly three dozen. Our team is going to answer <clears throat> some of your questions, uh, if we're able, uh, just so, because some of the questions that you're asking, um, we actually kind of know the answers to, and we can therefore save the questions you ask. Um, Sri Ram for the ones that that we're curious about the answer to as well. 